Hello there, my friends, and welcome to the pilot episode of Dimitri Does Gaming. Yep, this is what you're gonna get now that my uh, head is currently in repair. Um, consider this a test of concept. Today you're gonna get to watch me playing Warhammer 40,000 Eternal Crusade. And, well, I'm dropping you right in the deep end, straight to the action. Here I am playing my Apocathuri, or as some of you may like to call it, an Apocafuri. <laughs> Which is basically, if you don't know the uh, 40,000 universe lore, that's the kind of healer space marine class. So, I am basically playing a combat medic. <laughs> and as you can see, I focus maybe more on the combat than I probably should. Hey, come back here. Come back here. Hey, I'm trying to heal you. Come on. Ah, stop running away from me. God damn it. Ah! Come on. Hold still for a moment. Let me fucking heal you. Come on. Ah, thank you. Fucking hell. I hate it when they run away from me like that. It's a pain. Like, I'm trying to heal you, dude. Come on, stand still. You just need a second. Ah. Anyways. So. I enjoy a lot of this game. It's, uh, certainly a lot of fun for me. Um, still in its infancy, I stress, and, oh dear, have strayed into a uh, place I shouldn't have. Um, uh, whoopsie! <laughs> yeah, I screwed up there. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'll just make the run back my own time. <clears throat> this is basically a kind of, uh, capture and hold mission where you've got three points where you have to capture and hold them. Um, the Every point when you first take it for the first time adds time to you. And, excuse me, I've had to cut a bit there because a, um, a spammer started uh, spewing a bunch of hate speech and we can't exactly have any of that now, can we? No, I don't want offensive racism propping up in my freaking game experience. I'll swear all the bloody want, but I ain't gonna have that. Anyways. Back to the gaming experience. Stepping away from the idiot who plagued this entire game, by the way. <laughs> we ended up having to shoot him on sight because he started team killing too. Because the friendly fire exists in this game, unfortunately. I've lost my friend, but another ally has shown up, and... Oh, no. Gotta take me down. Ah. Yeah. Autocannons. Space... Chaos Space Marine Autocannons. The most overpowered weapon in their arsenal currently. Rapid fire... and kills in two to three hits. Fun times. But. Exactly. As the. You may have heard there. The characters taunt. <laughs> what we seek can only be found in death. <laughs> now to the killing. All atom cannons must die. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, another factor of this game that's quite key and important is melee. You would think for a shooter that would be uh, not exactly a big thing, but it's huge in this. And if you know anything about the 40k universe, that's normal. Melee is heavily emphasized. Um, you won't see me play much of it though, because uh, as you can probably tell, I kind of suck at it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can expect it for being a medic, but beyond that, I am just... I've got a melee class I can play, and I'm terrible with it. <laughs> uh, I fail at video games so much, but at least I can play healer pretty good. That was the troll, by the way. Just healing the other guy. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm 
I appear to have gotten a little sidetracked there. <laughs> I was explaining about how when you capture each point for the first time in this game, um, it usually adds time for the map as a whole. Um, so if you capture all three points, you can almost guarantee yourself a victory just purely on the basis of having enough time to cap out with one capture point alone. Um, but it's uh, <laughs> easier said than done, especially when most will dig in on those last points and really make it tough on you. Um, there are other game modes too. Um, this is just the main principal one at the moment. Uh, the other two currently are a uh, kind of procedural cap one where you have various points and a limited number of respawns where you can, uh, as you capture them, reduce those uh, number of respawns as well as, you know, adding time to your clock. And then there's the third mode currently in the game, which is the Fortress mode. And that's usually 40 on 40. Massive battles, big events. Where, um... The amount of, uh, enemies and stuff are really ridiculous, but it really feels properly epic. Um, it's a really awesome game mode, I love it. Uh, I didn't get many of it lately, hence why you're not seeing one of those right now. <laughs> Um, but it's, um, yeah, great fun to play that. Uh, usually also limited resources as well. Um, I'm not sure whether that's changed or not. It's been a while since I've had the map. About three months. But, uh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> I failed a bit there. Um, but yeah, I mean... That uh, game mode has, as far as I know, still got the limited respawns as well. But those respawns, uh, as you are captured out, if you're, I mean, you initially have to destroy gateways, and each gateway has a number of respawns, usually about 70, I think. And when you destroy those gateways, those respawn points go to point A, which is behind the wall. And if they destroy both gates, that's 140 extra respawns to point A, making it all the more defensible. So usually the tactic is to destroy just one gate and leave the other standing until they have to limit the respawns. Uh, stop, the, uh, stop the enemy or whatever digging in there. And then when you capture A point, whatever's left at A point goes to the B point, which is the main fortress, and that is the real last dig in ditch survival point there, where you have to uh, defend at all costs, and usually you want to have about 130 to 140 respawns at that point. And most of the time I've played it, that is the case. <laughs> It's almost a guaranteed win for the defending side. Probably why I might not have had it when it could be uh, taken off and rebalancing. But it's, um... Oh yeah, it really feels good to play that. Even on the attacking side, it just feels so epic to be in such a large battle. Um... <laughs> good times can be had with it. So... I saw this morning on uh, British TV, um, a show literally called uh, This Morning on ITV, or as we sometimes call it, Channel 3. Um, they had some furries on this morning. A group of three. One I recognized from Confuzzled, even. <laughs> um, yeah, it seems like they gave reasonable respect, uh, although there was a... Uh, one of those underlying ticker things that came up that said, um, uh, we like fur, it's not a fetish, Ugh, something like that. It's like, oh, media, that's leading, come on. Ugh. But hey, I'll give them that. At least they did clearly state it's not a fetish. But, um, yeah, you know how the media is. Yes means yes, no means yes, and whatever you don't say about it also means yes. <laughs> the only way you can get out of it is to kind of play around with it and mock it in a sense. 
I like Kage's method of, uh, oh yeah, I've heard that one before, kind of thing. You know, kind of treat it like it's a common joke, and just laugh it off. And if you're not confident enough, just waste your fucking time. They'll go away pretty quickly if you waste their time. <laughs> That's how to deal with the media, apparently. And I trust him, he's actually had media training on the matter. But yeah, I mean, it's just fairly common practice among us. Eh? But, uh, media are not to be trusted. Because they're always looking for that little scandal, ain't they? That little thing that's like, mm, you know, look at these people, they are strange. They do strange things like have sex and animal costumes. Yeah, 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 fucking hell. Ugh. Yeah. But, you know what? <sighs> Furries have sex, yeah. Big fucking deal. So does everybody else. What, you're not getting enough? You jealous? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. At least we know how to enjoy life, eh? As I've said for nearly 20 years now, furries have more fun. And I firmly believe that. Y'all do. You're amazing people, alright? Never let anybody tell you otherwise. You're awesome. Stay awesome. Oh, a uh, little interesting event here. Um, if you saw there, there was a uh, an enemy player that had a skull in their icon above their head. That means that they are an elite or a veteran. Um, elite ones usually have a skull with flames under it. A uh, veteran just has the skull. Um, you'll see me play my veteran uh, now, I think, yeah firing at my veteran. Um, veterans have 400 extra loadout points, which enables you to have that much more gear and armor and special things as well. Like, uh, you can have iron halos, which add substantial armor. Like that chap just ran past me. And um, I choose not to because I can get more out of the way I load out. I also have a incendiary rounds on this bolter, which is a... Uh, small perk of elites and veterans as well. So, I do a little bit more damage ticking after I hit them initially, which can help get the kill sometimes. Um, it's definitely a strong advantage to have. Um, there I go off on my meandering tangents again, as you know. No, I am legend for. <laughs> Ah, hey, I know some of you enjoy that. It's fine. There I go. I've been doing uh, pretty well this match. Uh, getting a lot of good heals in, getting them at the right time. Not being silly. A lot. <laughs> you know what? It's only stupid if it doesn't work, eh? <laughs> Yay! Victory! We win the day. Loyal Space Marines. And hey, I got a couple commendations. That ain't bad. Ooh, nice lot of experience. And of course, requisition points. Ooh, hey, top of the board! Woo! Well done, me. Alright, well, I hope you enjoyed this pilot episode of Dimitri Does Gaming. And, uh, yeah. Expect a bit more of this in the future. If it's well received, of course. But for now, my friends, stay awesome. Dimitri, out. <laughs>